Hello, welcome to the NeoScore tutorial for getting started. This is just an entry level uh, tutorial into setting up the system ready to go, running this first bit of code here and exploring some of the different options of um, showing or rendering. That's all we're going to be doing. I'm going to use PyCharm for all of this. You can use your own IDE. It's all very sim similar and simple, um, but PyCharm is a nice all-in-one package for uh, virtual environment management and also as well for uh, script running and management in that. Um, so if we go, if we just read through here, NeoScore is a Python library, okay? So we're going to be working in Python. Um, as you've probably read already on the website, it is a graphics-first environment, whereas other notation um, languages, uh, libraries in Python will port out generally to Lillipond and, and um, will give Lillipond the responsibility of generating the score, generally as a rendered image. Um, what NeoScore does is will make everything there and then in Python. All the lines, all the clefs, all the notes, everything is there as QT or as graphical uh, live graphical images. Uh, and therefore it's ultimately flexible uh, fast and ultimately manipulatable as well and interactive. Uh, it says here we need a minimum requirement of 3.7. Um, PyCharm will look after all of that for you. Um, and also as well, you're going to need a dedicated virtual environment. Strongly recommend you following that um, best practice in Python. And we're going to be based in virtual environment, VENV. So let's get started. Let's go to PyCharm and I'm going to put in a new project. We're going to end, get something like this. So this is going to be a pure Python project and we are going to call it just here, the location name. We're going to call it, I'm going to call it NeoScore test. I already have a NeoScore. And this new environment will be a virtual environment and we're going to, um, it'll use anything from 3.7 above so I'm just going to go on 3.7, it's nice and stable. Um, you can use whichever one you wish. So let's create that. Here we go. So just while it's running and just building up the environment in the background there, the next thing that we're going to be doing is just very quickly we're going to install NeoScore. Now NeoScore is hosted in the uh, PYP um, uh, repository. So we can use pip to install. So a very simple command, pip install NeoScore. So if we go to the terminal and open that up, I'll explain what's just popped up on the screen. We're going to go pip install NeoScore. Okay, so what's happened there is NeoScore has built us this environment. Yep, it's built us this workspace here. It has put over here the virtual environment, which is where all of our um, repositories and libraries will go to. And it's already made us a script, main.py, which will be our working script. So we can just copy all of that lot, delete it. This will be the workstation. This will be the environment where we'll be drawing, putting in all our code. The advantage here is that also it has um, got us our playback scripts here. So we can run main at any point. If you wanted to add, add additional scripts, then you would edit configurations and you'll add stuff in there. All of that is explainable in PyCharm land, and I'm not going to bother with you with it here. Um, but it's good to get it, your head around uh, this environment. So basically, if we wanted to run a script, I'm going to press play here. And if we want to change it, I'm going to write it in here. That's basically it. In fact, all of this lot here, we'll say goodbye to. And the good news is PyCharm, uh, PyCharm, NeoScore has downloaded and installed correctly, including the main um, dependency, which is PyQT5. This facilitates NeoScore, um, all the graphical environments. Um, uh, it, um, this supports NeoScore by drawing and rendering all of the graphical environments on the screens or out as, um, out as uh, kind of images, uh, PDFs, 
PNGs, whatever it is, but also, you know, kind of the main stuff that you see on the screen. Because PyQt is, you know, huge and massive and well supported uh, and uh, will do an abundance of graphical work, it will also support, um, it will also support animation. Um, You've probably read already that the, the whole point of NeoScore is to create something in real time, in real graphics first, on the screen there and then. Whereas other um, notation libraries um, will export out file uh, data and expect Lillipond to render the, um, the notation um, and then that comes back as a JPEG or an image or whatever it is. Um, now that's fine if you want to do that, great, no problems. And these these notation softwares are superb. You know, MuseScore is absolutely fantastic, but they are very regimented and fixed. Um, for instance, if you have a bar of four four, you can only stick four crotchets in it. Whereas NeoScore just uses these things as graphical objects. If you put four four at the start of the bar, you know, you could put as many crotchets or quarter notes in that bar as you want, or you don't even need any bar lines. It's totally free, open, and creative. So this is good. I'd expect to see something like that. Um, there's no errors whatsoever, and we're ready to go. So we can hide that, and we've got all this play space here. So let's go back to here and get this first. I'm just going to copy and paste that. This is our first program, and we're going to paste it here. So what have we got going on here? Well, we are saying that from NeoScore, a particular file called common, we are going to import absolutely everything. So what this has done is is imported all of the general functionality that we need um, from NeoScore in one command line. That's, that means it's really simple and everything we want to reach for is here, but it's clunky in terms of the amount of um, um, the amount of uh, memory that is going to take up because it's storing everything even though it's not using a, a great deal. Whatever we do, we need to write NeoScore setup. We need to put that in first, yeah? Uh, because if we don't have that, it doesn't set up all of the background um, and bootstrapping uh, protocols and it won't work. This is an example of just some code. I mean, it's just a bit of text. We know that because it says text here. And these are the creation arguments. These are the properties of that text. And we'll go into some detail in following on videos about this. And then this one here is really important because this is going to show it on the screen. There is another option here, but we'll just press play and we'll just, um, we'll just run this one for now and let's see what we get. So if we press, I've just pressed play in the top right hand corner here. And here it goes, oh, it took some time. So what we have here is, I'm just gonna zoom in. We have a page and at the very top of the page, let's have a look at the code at the same time. The very top left hand corner, yeah, the very top left hand corner there, what is called the origin of the page, or the origin of the whatever we're assigning it to, this is going straight to the page. Whatever it is, is the top left-hand corner of it. Now, the text is anchored at the bottom left-hand corner, so the anchor point, the bottom left-hand corner of NeoScore, is attached to the origin, which is x0, y0 in these coordinates, and that's why it's positioned there. This dotted line is the margin of a page which is set up when we do the NeoScore setup, and we can alter that. Um, let's have a look at this. None is apparent. So it, we need to assign, or we have the options of assigning these things, these graphical um, objects, in this case, a bit of text. We can, ass uh, we can uh, assign, assign them to be relatable to a particular parent. Don't worry about that, we'll talk all about that later. And then the third creation argument, the third property, is the text itself. So if we wanted to change that, we can do. So let's have a look at changing that. Hello, you. And let's change the origin and give it a proper X and Y coordinate. Well, 
let's have it, um, so the X1 will do it in millimeters, hence the mm, and we'll do it 20 in, and we'll have it 100 down. Now notice I've also put this as a tuple, so in the curvy brackets. I've put an X and a Y in a tuple, so it's an immutable data atom. It's not going to be assigned to anything still because there's nothing else there. There's just the text file and then there's hello at you. So let's have a look at what happens when we run that. So here's the origin, here's zero, zero, and it has come in, what did we say? 20 millimeters in from the left and 100 millimeters down. We've positioned it there. Okay, that's it. That's the basics of it all. We have a parent, we have a position, parent in this case is the document itself, so there is the document which is the piece of paper and then there is in there we have positions like origin and zero and x and y and we can put anything we want, in this case we put some text at 20 millimeters in and 100 millimeters down. We could do the same for a staff, we could do the same for a clef, we can do the same for a note, we can do the same for a, a square block, yeah, an image of, you know, a clarinet, whatever we want. There's a couple of other things that we should um, have a look at here. Is If I was to hover over this setup here, it's going to fetch the document. There is a creation argument there which says paper. I can put some a different sized piece of paper or I can design my own sized paper. At the moment we've only got A4 and I think letter is the other one. So we just stick with those. Text, if we hover over the, the main um, object text, will also give us all of these options and explain what they are here. These are repeated in the tutorials and also on the, um, um, also on the API, which is down here. So if we look at core, for instance, and go to text, it will just replicate what we've just seen there, but with some added functionality. And in NeoScore Show, we have several options here. So there is a refresh function, and we'll have a very quick look at that. There is um, some um, creation arguments like display page geometry, uh, full size, full screen, those kind of things. This is an interesting one, the display page geometry. Let's turn that off. So it's a bool, it's currently set to true. If we have a look at it here, fetching documentation, bool, currently set to true. Well, if we turn that off and run this, what happens? Size of the page changes. It's no longer, um, it's no longer showing the margin and the window size has changed as well. It's probably going to not let us get any smaller than that because that is the actual size of the window. It is basically just what we have put in there. Um, and the other thing that we can do is we can render. So at the moment this is going to show it on the screen for us, really good, but actually what happens if we wanted a JPEG image of these things um, so that we can render it out and then pick it up by another piece of the software somewhere else or just to share it or to uh, publish it or something like that. So if we put render PDF or render image, we can do that. Now there are some creation arguments here. So this is saying um, which rectangle do you, you know, what bit do you want to, to print out? So you could just have, you know, various sizes if you want. Uh, there's also cropping options and there's preserve alpha if you want to make it, uh, if you want, don't want to make it um, transparent. Um, and there's also the you know, DPI function, we can put that in there, the quality of the function in there. So DPI 300 is publishable, you could take that up to 600 or 1200, whatever you wanted. But we have those uh, different options in there for you. I won't be using these, PDF is the same, so if we go into this, hover over PDF, we can see that there is the path, where do you want it to go? and the DPI is uh, the resolution. Let's have a look at image because that should have had path as well. Render image, bing bong. Um, let's have a look at that. Fetching documentation, destination, there it is. So the rectangle, 
You can put nothing in, so it'll do the whole screen. The destination is the path you want it to go. DPI quality, and these are the follow. These are the types of file formats that are currently supported here. So let's go back to show. Um, so that will show it on the screen. I just want to very quickly run around. So we're going to be looking at this NeoScore documentation with the follow-on videos. We will also look at these examples and we will also be looking at the API as well. So for now, what I'm just going to quickly go to is this animation one because this is another part of it that I find very exciting. And this is because it's supported by PyQt. So let's, oh, it's built upon PyQt. Let's copy that. Let's put that, get rid of all of this lot. And we'll just talk through this. So it is importing math as another um, library uh, package uh, built into um, Python. Specifically now, we're not just kind of bringing in everything. You know, we're going to be optimizing, trying to optimize, and all the videos that fall on will just follow on. We'll be using specific modules brought in from NeoScore. We have NeoScore as the the package. We also have two or several types of libraries, two that we're really going to be using. One is called Core, which has all of the core functions like NeoScore, Flowables, we'll get to that, Units, Points, um, all stuff that is shared across different genres or different types of scores. And then we have specific Western concepts like cleft duration and things like that. So in this one, we're going to be using a cleft, some durations, key signatures, note heads, and staffs. We always have to set up NeoScore as the first thing that we do. So the first line of code, for those who don't know Python too well, this uh, interpreter is going to start at line one, read that, do all of this lot, import all of that, and then read the next one, the next one, the next one. So it's going to be a linear explanation, uh, you know, a linear uh, execution. So the first thing that we need to do is to set up NeoScore. A flowable container, we talk about that in staffs, but it's a very handy thing on a page. You've got edges, um, and if you want a staff that is, you know, two meters long, what you, do, you don't want is a piece of paper printed off that's two meters wide. A flowable container is an intelligent device that lets you put things like staves for string quartets or for orchestras and it will intelligently find the breakpoints on a page or on the margin of a page where it will wrap it down to the next um, system as it's coming down. In terms of identifying where things go on your stave, on your staff, let's say it is two meters long, that will be preserved. You can access it at any point between those two meters. You do not have to compensate your code for these wraparound um, you know, kind of with um, breakpoints within the flowable container. And so what's basically happening here is we've got a, we've called a flowable. It is an object which has been brought in previously. It has a tuple coordinate. We could have put origin here, but actually this is going to be the X and the Y coordinate. The X coordinate is millimeter zero. The Y coordinate is millimeter zero. In PyQt land, in fact, most computer programs, Y comes from top to bottom, not bottom, not the other way around. So zero, zero is always going to be the top left hand. Y10 is going to be 10 millimeters down. X10 is going to be 10 millimeters across to the right. There's no parent, so that, you know it is going to be attached to the document. This one is, um, this one is its length. So we've got a flowable. Um, uh, a container that is 500 millimeters long. The next one is the height, so it is going to be 30 millimeters high. So it's not too big, it's not going to fit a string, string quartet or anything like that in. Um, and the next one is the Y padding, which we've just, you know, how much space between the staves do we want to give um, on the breakpoints? And this is uh, 10 millimeters of padding. 
Won't explain too much here, but we then create a staff. Similar types of arguments. There is an X and a Y position. There is a parent, and we need the staff to go into the flowable container. If I put my flowable, that makes it clearer and more distinct from just the generic flowable. Yeah? So we've created a flowable. We're then going to stick this staff, which we could call my staff if we wanted, and we're going to stick that at position 0, 0 in my flowable container. And it is 500 millimeters long. Now, if we wanted to, we can just hover over staff and it fetches the documentation for us, or we can use the API, or you can go to one of my video tutorials. Units. Every staff has a unit. A unit is the space between each of the lines. Obviously, if you manipulate staff to make the spacing differently, a unit is going to be a different size. And it needs to know units because that's where it's going to position um, automatically. It will position the um, notes that you are handing it. Of course, it needs to know what clef it's in, so it needs to know where middle C is. And then there's a key signature here, which is going to zero on staff, which is in my flowable container, and it is G major. So if we were to run that, we're going to get a single staff in a flowable container that's going to chop up and then it's, uh, you know, it's going to have treble clef, it's going to G major. So wherever we put a note, and here are some notes, wherever we put a note, it's going to know where it is in relation to, G, uh, to, C, uh, to middle C within the G major key signature. The key signature won't do anything. It will not automatically alter your notes. So if you want an F natural in there, obviously you've got to put an F natural in because the key signature will be dictating it. But it doesn't know if you put an F in there, it doesn't know if it's an F sharp or not. It's just an F to it on line of the space F or on the line uh, of the octave above middle C. Now what we've got here is note heads. We'll cover this later on, but the, generally we're going to be using chord rests, which is a, a, a much more... Um, generic function. But for, the, the, for this, which is an, uh, just a demonstration of its animation pro properties, we're going to be using note heads. So this is going to create a note head at a center point, and the center is going to be 15 units. Yep, 15 units in. So that's 15 bar um, line widths from the left on the staff, my staff, and it's going to be note G and it's going to have a duration of one quarter note. Just the note head, not the beam. Um, chord rest will automatically sort that out, so we're just interested in the note rest. Then we've got this refresh function, and this is going to use some maths to make, um, to animate those note heads, and we'll see what happens in a minute. But here's the difference. Whereas before we only had NeoScore show, and, you know, we could put in here also the, the other function that we liked, which was the display geometry to false. We can get rid of that. We can still put that in. Let's spell it right, though. But the previous function, let's hover over show. The previous function uh, property is refresh func. Now, this will, because this is a graphical environment, it's running at 30 or 60 frames per second to hold the image on the screen, we can also intervene with each of those refresh points. And we can do something like animate the, um, the notes. But we need to tell it, what it need, where it needs to go, what the refresh function is. So that's why we've defined this refresh function. 60 times a second, this thing is going to be called. Yep. And 60 times a second, it is going to do something with, well, N1, we know N1 is a note, and it's X position. So we've got this dot X, we're refining down not the whole of N1, but just its X position, and it's going to start manipulating some stuff. So let's have a look at that um, and see that in action. There you go. So as you can see, obviously I'm recording, so it's taken up a lot of bandwidth, which is why it's looking a bit glitchy. But this is why we haven't limited, well, apart from the creativity aspect and the openness, the fact that PyQt 
is running NeoScore and it has possibilities for animation and all sorts of other things. Um, this is why we think NeoScore is absolutely fantastic. Okay, that will do us. Thank you very much.